so uh, uh, I'm I'm from Dupont, and uh, what I do today is uh, uh, we'll just take you through uh, the various module-based parameters. You know, we have heard a lot about EPCs. You have heard a lot about uh, integration. You a lo lot about regulations since today morning, but uh, I would be covering something which uh, perhaps is around you know, 65 percent capex of the project. You know, a module uh, is is generating active part of the uh, uh, particular PV project, and uh, I would like to uh, take you through certain of our uh, you know uh, observations, certain of our findings, uh, and to see let's see you know whether. <coughs> Uh, we can uh, make a more reliable quality and a safer project. Just about DuPont, uh, DuPont is a 200 year old company uh, and uh, uh, with specific reference to uh, the solar areas, we are basically into uh, uh, the solar mat, the silver paste and uh, we, we have the Tedlar which, which forms a part of the back sheet and uh, we also have a EVA uh, encapsulant basically people use UVA which is a different kind of a specialized uh, encapsulant called ionomer. Uh, additionally uh, there has been uh, an addition of one more product the silicon sealant uh, with the uh, acquisition of Dow Corning uh, and merger of Dow Corning and DuPont. So basically as we stand today DuPont is the single largest uh, module uh, material suppliers in the globe. So just to give a quick uh, overlook like then again you have a layer of encapsulant that is the EVA, then you have a back sheet, the whole set is sandwiched and laminated and covered with a, with a frame for a structural support, then a junction box is, uh, uh, is, is uh, at the back of the module uh, which can take out the power which, is, which, which the module has generated. Uh, to, to be very specific, uh, we at DuPont, uh, we have uh, we, we have our involvement, you know, you see the cells, you know, the, the paste what uh, goes into uh, is into the bus bars and the fingers which is uh, conducting the active part of the cell. Then we have our uh, <coughs> back sheet which is the last layer, a layer of the back sheet uh, and uh, we of course have the sealant which is of course not shown here. Going more specific to back sheet, you know, it's, it's further W, it's, it's not a single, single product, you know, back sheet has, is a three layer project. You have a polyester thing in the center, uh, you have an inner layer and you have an outer layer. The outer layer is basically a protective layer, it's, it's like you know you have a galvanization on a steel, steel structure, you know. Steel may be very good and solid but without a galvanizing <coughs> you have very high chances of very quick corrosion and rust. The inner layer basically serves the purpose of a bonding between the back sheet and the EVA. So I will not get into the details of it but just gives a, a, a snapshot of uh, what what all you know uh, kind of uh, combinations a back sheet can have it's important to know this uh, when when somebody goes and tries to you know get a, a module uh, negotiation or a module purchase process uh, why is it important you know it's it's very simple i'm just quoting an iit study uh, we all know that you know the typical module degradation is around 0.272% a year from the second year onwards forgetting the, the LID of the first year. Uh, this is what has been you know it, it's like a data sheet but what real what is the reality you know an, an sampling done by an IIT, uh, IIT Bombay uh, has found that there has been an average power loss of one and a half percent. It's not really 0.72 you know it's one and a half percent and uh, there is another interesting set of statistics which has come out that if you see modules which are more than five years old it is 1.1 percent and if you see modules which are less than 5 years it is 1.7 percent. It is a very clear indication that uh, as the pricing is, is dipping you know as the competition the tariffs putting you know a lot of pressure on the pricing uh, the, the, I, can, I can say that you know the, the quality of the modules are contributing to a higher degradation. Now, this is something uh, which becomes very important because uh, most of the discussion, most of the consultations are, are across one spectrum that you know what is my project cost today. I got a tariff of 3, 2 rupees 44, 2 rupees 50, 2 rupees 70 whatever it is. If I put all my costs together will I get my return and to make that return happen you know it is a very challenging task, it is enviable whoever does is you know uh, we really have to you know stand by them. Uh, but if you have to make that happen 
where exactly can I cut the cost? You can see this discussion across all companies, be it a developer, be it a EPC or whatever it is. And in this process, people think that, you know, certain small things can be eliminated and these certain small things in a combined nature is perhaps causing a kind of a, a you know, degradation issues here. Uh, just to give a, a, a small uh, input, uh, if you check with any uh, developer who is into module purchasing, uh, asking you know what's the price range you typically get from the best of the module to the worst of the module, there is a price range difference of around two to three cents, so almost around seven to ten percent. Now this is irrespective of whoever makes, you know whether you call it tire one, whether you call it is you know, uh, um, the European etc. The point is very simple, you know, where is this, you know, uh, uh, 2 to 3 cents going, you know, it just can't vanish, okay, 2 to 3 cents may have some amount of premium element in the in the modules, uh, the manufacturer may be a well known tire one or a supply constraint uh, period, etc. So let us say around 30, 40 percent of this 2 to 3 cents may be because of those branding or commercial issues, but surely the balance 40, 50 percent would certainly, you know, we can safely assume goes into some kind of a compromise which happens onto the uh, the, the sub components of the modules. DuPont does extensive field studies globally because, you know, we, we supply materials which goes to make the module and uh, it is a science and innovation based organization. So, to help us innovate, to help us, you know, understand the, the the field uh, situations, the behavior of modules, uh, uh, how the power generation happen. We do extensive field studies across the globe and uh, uh, just sharing a couple of, uh, you know, typical defects, uh, what happens and what we have observed. Uh, you have certain things on the cell side, you know, you've got cell crack, we've got hot spots, uh, things like snail trails, you know, you, some of you are, would have seen it, you know, which, which are showing up. Cells are becoming thinner, you know, where is the cost getting cut, you know, we, we, we are now looking at less than 4 grams a cell for the uh, polysilicon quantum for the cell. So where exactly is it going, you know, it's obviously it has to get, uh, you know, thinner. It's okay from the electrical performance point of view, I'm sure, you know, people would have done a lot of studies on that. But from the structural point of view, the kind of handling we see uh, across the globe and especially in India, the last moment commissioning deadlines, the way modules are being handled. You really need to see whether uh, this kind of, uh, you know, uh, 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 compromises which apparently should not compromise electrical performance ends up, uh, you know, creating some kind of a micro cracks over a period of time. You also have situations of corrosions, uh, metallization corrosions. Uh, the second major thing what we have seen is the back sheet cracking, uh, which is very evident. Uh, it, you know, you, you have, as I showed you some time back that there are a lot of combinations of a backsheet structure uh, using multiple combinations, you also have a multiple possibilities of, of the backsheet coming off. Remember one thing, you know, as the glass is the top support of the module, the backsheet is the bottom support of the module. I mean, everything in between has to work. So, you can't really compromise on, on one of the support, be it structural or be it uh, uh, you know, in terms of uh, chemical uh, you know, uh, electrical characteristics. <coughs> These are some actual photos, you know, what we have seen where the back sheet cracking and the delaminations issues and all. EVA typically also has a lot of demel delamination issues, uh, browning due to UV impacts, etc. Then comes the external part, the junction box. Uh, usage of bad quality diodes, cracks in diodes, we have seen, you know, the uh, uh, failures uh, in the in the junction box and many a times there have been fires and replacements. Now there is also one thing we need to consider going through all this that you know uh, any of these items if there is something wrong with the module let us say you discover it after a couple of years. In an ideal situation you have to simply replace the module. Your cells may be in great condition, uh, your uh, you know uh, uh, electrical performance because of some other item get affected, if the back sheet cracks or even the glass breaks, you can't simply replace it, you know, it's not a replacer, it's like use and throw situation. People of course are trying to do some patch things, but then that is not a fully uh, effective method. It, it is essential that, you know, the module should get replaced. What would happen that if you want to replace the module after 5-6 years, there is another nuisance value attached to it. 
you would have purchased the module, you know, you, the module capacity is wattages are simply growing up, you know, from 250, 300, 350, it's just going up. Every year, you know, you're seeing around 30, 40 watt, watt peak going up on the module. Now, what would happen? Uh, let's say after five years, you know, you want a replacement of a 330 watt peak module. We really do not know whether you would get a 330 watt peak, you know, you would do a string management. Now, there is an issue there. There is a lot of nuisance value attached. So, the point is, don't really simply look at the upfront cost and the cheapest cost. I mean, you also need to factor in some kind of a loading on the OEM cost if you really want to go for the cheapest cost and really see how the IRR works out. Now, all these impacts, you know, uh, some of them have got an electrical impact, some of them have got a safety impact. Uh, both are equally, I mean, I would say safety is the more crucial part because you've got a lot of OEM guys working around, a lot of them are semi-skilled people. Uh, you really can't tell them that there's a thousand volts system going on, just be careful. You know, uh, if some back sheet is cracking, you know, don't go and touch it, you know, kind of thing. Many of these modules go to rooftop. You know, that's a more dangerous scenario. You know, if, if, the, if the back sheet peels off and if there is a short between a metal roof and the module, Sorry, which is Pravin, perhaps... Pravin, sir. I'll, I'll cut it down, right. Fast, right. You know. Because this timing is... Just two more slides, so. okay? So, okay, I mean, just closing up the issue, what typically has been an approach when somebody selects a module, it's been more on the tire one. I mean, it, it's like a branding, you know, you have a brand and you, you think that the brand supports everything. You go with the warranties, people go with the insurance and we go with the IEC. Uh, as, uh, uh, you know, one of the panelists said, IEC is more done to suit the... Uh, European countries, it really is not made to suit uh, all kinds of climatic conditions. In fact, when we did a sequential testing on the same module passed by IC, the modules really failed. And look at the other, other side of it. All the modules being installed in India or worldwide are IC certified, but we still have module failures. So that itself is a certification that IC is not foolproof. The IC was foolproof, should not have been failures. Now, what are we, I mean, suggesting? Uh, we are saying that, look, don't just go by the, the broader commercial parameters. These are typically commercial parameters, barring IIC, which can be techno-commercial. Please get into the below material of the uh, module. Uh, look and I showed you the picture of what are the module components. Please get into that, get into the nitty gritties of that, you know, go define each and every component of it. Not much is there, you know, seven, eight components. If you can spend time on 35% of the uh, capex, uh, please also spend some more time on the 70% of the capex and also do a due diligence audit on the module manufacturing facility wherever you are buying from. Uh, just wanted to show that, you know, uh, modules at different situations, climatic conditions, rooftop, you know, they have different impacts. For example, uh, a, a rooftop thing has got much higher UV radiation. It has got much higher thermal stress because it's close to the uh, ground. Uh, and there is no heat evacuation because ground mounted, you have got a wind blowing and taking away the heat. You have dust accumulation issues and you have got shadows issues. So each you know, climatic as well as where you put has a bearing on how the module is going to perform. Uh, shortage of time, so I will just run through it. I just wanted to show uh, some pictures like this is some PVF based back sheet, the 31 year old, 27 year old plants working in Switzerland and USA, still working with the a degradation of you know less than 0.5 percent. Uh, one last slide, Ms. Samantha. Sorry. Uh, <coughs> want to sum up the whole thing with just one thing. Uh, what does the cost? I talked about uh, you know around two to three cents cost difference. I would not get into everything. I don't know the statistics of everything. But let me look at one portion. You know, you want to improve a back sheet quality. There may be a price increase of around half a cent. Per watt. So, what does this half a cent really convert into? If you are going into a bidding category, it converts into around three paisa per kilowatt hour in terms of you know the the tariff. If you want to see how much is when you will recover the half a cent, I would not say recover. It's equivalent to perhaps a 20 days of your generation. But not going for these kind of a thing and taking a risk on a degradation of let's say one percent to two percent, you will be losing generation for almost. 280 days with a 1 percent degradation. So, you gain a 20 percent or you lose 280. Please go into the bomb and uh, see how things can be, you know, uh, improved for a 25. Don't look at, you know, 1, 2 years, look at 25 years. Uh, <coughs> DuPont does, I, I started off with saying that, you know, we have, we have material suppliers, but with, with the EPCs and project developers, we work to support them in, uh, in making specifications, supporting in making specifications. 
uh, identifying quality focused modules. Uh, we also do a lot of field testing uh, to, to give them the inputs if they want to, you know, take care of the warranty issues and all. Now, this is su support. It's not a cost service, it's just a support. There's no cost associated with it. Uh, just wanted to clarify on that. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, uh, basically DuPont is a kind of a two material is things is very, very important, uh, particularly on the EVA side, you know, because when you go through the thermal cycling, you know, minus 40 degrees Celsius and then plus 85 degrees Celsius, you know. So when it is going into the minus means the EVA, uh, when it is laminated and get a brittle character, so you have to be a little, little, little careful on that, you know. So choosing the live bomb for the module is very, very important because of the low module cost, you know. So the other thing is very important today that the, the cost of this EVA is less than a dollar per square meter. And the other thing on the back seat is $2.5 a per square meter. So the compositions of all the back seats is also very, very, very important to select your bomb for the EPC and the developer and those who are purchasing the module for the next time. You can consult, you know, there are a lot of experts in the panelists. So I'll ask Pradeep, you know, he's uh, from another uh, very good business house, it's called Havels, you know, the Havels is the quality of the, you know, different electrical appliances, you know. So I'll ask him to have a, a presentation, but it should be uh, short and the crispy, you know, so that uh, everybody uh, is, you know, benefited with the time because we have to finish it by 3.30, right? I think it will be good uh, to merge the session so that uh, the conference can end uh, a little early and uh, everyone can enjoy the weekend. So let's uh, welcome uh, Mr. Ashish, Mr. Ashish, Mr. Rahul and Mr. B.S. Arun Kumar with a round of applause ladies and gentlemen. And we'll uh, begin, uh, we'll now continue with the presentation uh, from uh, Havels. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon everyone. You know, we've been hearing a lot about it since we're running short of time. I'll uh, straight move on to the subject. Uh, we've been, uh, you know, hearing about the quality of the power delivered and the quality of the components that are being used in a power plant. So I would be today focusing on something, a very new advancement uh, in basically uh, the, you know, string inverter technology, uh, the module level power electronics. I'm Pradeep Menon, I'm representing Havels. Havels uh, got into the solar space about two years ago. We are an end-to-end solar company, they're in almost all spectrums of the solar, right from portables to off-grids, hybrid solutions, and the grid tie, and also the street lights and mini mast sections. Today, but I would be focusing, like I said, on the module level power electronics, uh, which is one of the, you know, which overcomes some of the major challenges, especially in the distributed power segment. You know, everyone has been stressing on, you know, the major challenges that are faced and module mismatch due to various reasons which have been actually elaborated. Uh, you know, it can be due to manufacturing tolerances, it can be due to transportation, partial shading due to soiling and other conditions. You know, this has always been a major challenge in any kind of, uh, you know, a grid tie system. As you're all aware, uh, the, uh, the panels are connected in series and any kind of a panel mismatch due to shading or any other reason, you know, it reduces the entire string power delivered to the inverter from that particular string. It has been a challenge and uh, the industry has been, you know, over the past two decades, you know, working on various technologies to overcome that. Havels has recently, you know, uh, partnered a company called Solar Edge, which is an Israeli company and one of the top players in the optimizer based technology. What basically this technology does is, you know, remove the, take the maximum power point tracking to the module level from the inverter level. What normally happens is when there is any kind of a mismatch or any kind of a shading, the power from one of the panels can go down. Let's say it's a 325 watt panel, maybe because of a 30% shading or any other reason. That particular panel starts working maybe at 225 watts or something. All the panels connected, normally in a traditional string inverter system, maybe 20 or 22 panels that are there, they all start operating at the 225 watt level, thus reducing the overall power delivered and reducing the efficiency of the system. What Solar Edge did was actually, you know, bring the MPPT to each module, thus, you know, making the adjoining panel independent of the other. 
The affected panel definitely would still continue to operate at 225 watts, but all the other panels in the string, you know, because of the module technology, uh, this uh, optimizer technology, are able to operate at its peak, thus enhancing the power delivered from each individual string to the, to the uh, inverter. Now, when you talk of a ground-mounted system, maybe, you know, these are not some of the challenges faced because they are very properly designed. Panels are at the right inclination, matching the latitude, they are south-facing. But when you do the rooftop, distributed power systems, normally we face a lot of constraints. The buildings have not been traditionally designed, you know, in anticipation that one day they would be having solar panels on the roof, especially when you're doing industries. They are not in the right orientation. You get buildings which are facing, you know, half the roof in southwest and half maybe northeast. And mostly, especially if you look at the uh, tin roofs, you hardly find any of the roofs which are having an inclination more than five or eight degrees. So, especially if you are doing a project in the north, where ideally you would like to keep the panel at maybe 26 degrees or something to extract the maximum, you know, one doesn't. The performance of uh, some of these rooftop systems, when you study, have been found to be, you know, below par, not sometimes actually, you know, meeting the expectations. When we evaluated a lot of technologies before, when we were looking for a sound partner in the grid tie space, you know, we found the solar edge optimizer-based technology to be a something different. Today, we have around nearly 240 installations in the last two years installed in India, and we have been mapping the performances of these sites. And we have seen almost 4% to 22% extra energy yield. We have sites where, you know, sometimes entirely the panels are facing east and west. But still, we have been able to get an average generation of maybe 4.4 to 4.5, you know, units per kilowatt. So this particular technology basically, you know, consists, uh, an optimizer is nothing but a basically a DC-DC device, which is a kind of a buck boost circuit. As the, you know, in, because of some shading or module mismatch or any other reason, if the, one of the panels starts performing below par, you know, the, normally the internal resistance of the panel is going up. Thus the overall voltage comes down and the whole string voltage comes down. In this case, you see what the, if you see what has been done, the inverter does not have the MPPT part. It's basically being split into two parts. Inverter is just a simple DC to AC inverter high efficiency, and it is runs on a constant, you know, 750 volt DC bus. It is con through power line communication, the inverter is constantly talking to each of the individual modules. So as and when an affected panel tries to drag down, the inverter communicates to the balance of the panels in the string and the voltage of those, and it boosts the voltage of the other panels to give a constant 750 volt DC bus. Now this is a major breakthrough and especially, like I said, you know, diversified, you know, ap application like roofs and other things where there are, you know, maybe ventilating fans, chimneys, and at different points of the day, different obstructions you see, you know, uh, which are causing a loss of power. This has really helped. And over and above that, the main advantage is like, uh, you know, we have been talking about monitoring systems and all that, but today almost all the monitoring systems provide up to string level monitoring. But here you have got individual module level data available right on your phone. Most of the data in, on your handphone app itself, you get almost, almost all the parameters that uh, the system can give you. And if you go into the portal and see the thing, you have the IV curve of each individual panel. People talk about, you know, panels, you know, warranty of 25 years linear performance, but it's a very challenging thing, and I don't know how many developers have actually gone back to a manufacturer and claimed those warranties. It's early days, but it's a tough challenge proving that you know this particular individual channel is performing now, and it's a costly affair. In this case, you can generate your the IV curve, you can take a block of panels, show them the comparison, and you can just you know pass on the data. So this is something which is very unique to this system. And today, with a lot of uh, Resco players have also kind of, you know, who are basically, you know, wanting to build their business model on the total yield. They are very, you know, it is very important for them that what is the total power that they generate for having their business model to be a success. 
This particular technology, though slightly more expensive, and if I may give you a ballpark figure, like at a project level, we're talking maybe, you know, four to six percent at the CapEx stage. But over the lifetime, the savings are, you know, highly exemplified. This apart, I'll quickly run through some of the other benefits of using the optimizer. Like I said, you can put panels all across the roof. You can put it in different orientations. People avoid putting it in different orientations because maybe some other panel, you know, in a different orientation might generate less and pull the whole string down. You can have uneven strings, which are not possible in the traditional string inverter. So you can have a panel string with 26 panels in one string, and I can have the other one at 30 modules. Thus, I can utilize the roof completely. So we have got basically more power on the roof. You can have different kind of modules also in the same string, which are not traditionally done for the same reason that in a series connection, you know, the lowest, the string would come down to the, you know, lowest panel. We're talking of longer warranties and somebody just recently mentioned that would I get the same panel from the manufacturer as a warranty after eight years? Would a 325 watt panel be getting manufactured at that point in time? Or would the manufacturer say, I'll give you a you know, manufacturer, but I'm giving you a 500 watt panel or a 450 watt panel. What do you do? You can't, if you go and put it back, you're not going to get any great advantage because your earlier panels in the string are 325. Maybe the size is a misfit. You see, there's an optimizer for every kind of panel. Like today, even up to 96 cells, an optimizer is available. As the panel technology would evolve, there would always be a particular optimizer. So at least you don't have to change the entire, you know, set of panels or something. You can always put a panel with a different rating in between your regular string. So this is going to, this is a very big advantage. You know, you can say some kind of a small what a future proofing your system. There's a huge saving because uh, in this particular system, you know, we load up to 36 panels in a string in the current 325 watt configuration. So a lot of saving in the DC cabling, almost up to 45 to 50 percent. So that's why I said at a project level, when you look at it, the overall cost, you know, impact for a buyer is between four to six percent today. So it is dramatically, you know, pretty competitive and for all the kind of advantages that are there. One of the most outstanding features which has helped this company become the number one string inverter company in the US and with now almost close to a 60% market share is the DC safe feature. We all know that you know the, all the inverters have got the anti-islanding and if the AC power is shut down, the inverters go into a shutdown mode immediately as a safety. But the DC string is still active. You still have the 600 to 800 volt DC bus running through your cables. In case of hazards and fires, it has been noticed that this has been a very major safety problem when they are, you know, they axe the walls or something. Very severe accidents have happened. This is the only uh, solution where the moment the AC switches off, all the optimizers go down to just one volt. So when I'm saying even if I'm having 36 uh, panels uh, in a string, I have only 18 volts maximum coming in the string. Is the DC safe? This has now become a, actually a regulation in almost 35 states in the US, out of the 50 states, and uh, rapidly gone. Europe is migrating to the DC safe as a regulation, and uh, this has, you know, this is one of the most important features uh, of this particular technology. Like I said, all the modules and everything is there on your app or on your tab. You can just see it. You can just, you know, touch a particular panel. You can know its performance, efficiency. Seeing, the, seeing it on your app, you know, you know if there has been some drastic, sudden, you know, fall in the generation, you know, compared to the previous week and all kinds of comparative data is also available. It tells you about each individual thing, an alert comes on your mail that there is something wrong. You can specifically, like you got two megawatts on a roof, like we have on our factory in Alvar, nearly 2.5 megawatts. There's a huge number of panels to go and identify. Here you know that panel number 3414 is the faulty one. You straight walk up, send your technician right there. So very quick up times, very low O&M cost. Something which has attracted the European and American market where the O&M is a very expensive uh, proposition. So I think something which is now also being there. Some of our channel partners have actually, because using this tool, made O&M a revenue business now. They were only, earlier only into the INC and you know, installation part. 
but now because of this kind of uh, communication tool available, they have now signing longer term contracts of O&M with their customers. So you get both the physical layout as well as the you know logical layout in this. If the panels were oriented in a different thing, they automatically the moment you connect all the modules to the inverter, the automatically it places and gives you the correct orientation. So it's very easy to identify. Inverter data and all other data like in any other remote monitoring system is also available. And this is the kind of, you know, the energy, various kind of screens that are available to have a quick analysis of all these. So something, uh, so this is how uh, a photograph of the optimizer which comes, you know, normally in the uh, residential category, which we say up to 15 kilowatt, there is one optimizer per module. And in the industrial and commercial space, there is one optimizer for two modules. So they are connected and, you know, very easy. It's just a kind of a plug and play and just you can mount it either on the firm or on the mounting rails or under the module frame. And last, I would like to tell you these are the only inverters which have a starting warranty of 12 years and can be extended up to 25 years and a very nominal cost. And the optimizers come with a standard 25 year warranty. So I think it's a pretty value added package. Like today, a lot of our customers insist other manufacturers also to give a 25 year warranty on the project, on the inverters as well. Well, when they work with some of the other competing inverters, the cost has to, maybe one or two inverters has to be loaded. And you know, and when you look at it from that point of view, this is a much, much more competitive solution. So we have a very wide range now. The range has been enhanced from now 33 kilowatt right up to single 100 kilowatt string inverters with medium voltage and up to 82 kilowatt string inverters, you know, which can uh, do. And in one megawatt, actually now they all come with an internal Wi-Fi. So it hardly takes about 15 minutes to commission a 3 megawatt system. Once you have plugged the uh, inverters, 31 of them talk to each other, one becomes a master and it only, there's no screens, we have removed all the screens and other things from the inverter. You can only use the app and it takes roughly about 15 minutes to 20 minutes to commission a 3.2 megawatt system after it's plug and play. And the 100 kilowatt inverter is something that two people can carry and install. So it's a very, very flexible system. And uh, you know, uh, now the full range is there. Also, we are now launching the one to 2.5 uh, for the homes, you know, which was earlier a slightly price challenged product, but specifically for India now, Solar Edge has developed this product where one optimizer for eight panels. So that has kind of rationalized the cost. And plus also, you know, even for small residential applications now, this technology can be extended. Pretty large installations have already been done, nearly like I said, 240 installations in India so far. Very recently, one of the major corporations has gone for a 25 megawatt ground project, ground mounted project also with the with these inverters and optimizer technology. Thank you very much.